Though we begin tonight with a lunar fact. For Christian believers, yesterday was Easter Sunday, better known to the saints as Resurrection Sunday, the holiest day in all of Christianity. But its actual date changes every year. Why? Because of the moon. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the full moon that follows the spring equinox. Got all that? Now, of course, Easter is also a holiday with a mix of different components. For Christians, it's the date of the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. But it's also the secular holiday when the Easter Bunny leaves out gifts and candy and colorful Easter eggs, a symbol of new life and a leftover ritual of pagan pre-Christian cultures in Europe. So naturally, this year, for absolutely no reason at all, right-wingers egged on, you see what I did there, by their pretend news outlets, freaked out about almost every aspect of Easter Sunday, including a preemptive meltdown about one small aspect of an adorable and innocuous White House tradition, today's 144th annual White House egg roll. MAGA World accused the Biden White House of banning religious themes from the children's egg decorating contest leading the American Egg Board to put out a statement reminding everyone that the American Egg Board has been a supporter of the White House Easter egg roll for over 45 years. And the guideline language referenced in recent news reports has consistently applied to the board since its founding across administrations. But the irrational freakout didn't end with the incredible edible egg. No, no. It extended to an inability to understand the lunar fact that I just mentioned earlier that the date of Easter changes every year. And this year, it happened to coincide with International Transgender Day of Visibility. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson claimed the White House betrayed the central tenet of Easter by commemorating the two on the same day. And Donald Trump's campaign demanded an apology from the White House to millions of Christians. But I guess they didn't bother to check the calendar. Since 2009, including the four unfortunate years when Trump was president, International Transgender Day of Visibility has been held annually on March 31st. And the Biden administration has marked the day every year since Biden was elected. Republicans were, however, content to ignore actual blasphemy from Donald Trump during Holy Week leading up to Easter, a week in which he compared himself to Jesus and promoted his $60 MAGA Bibles with secular literature tucked inside. Because to Trump, Easter Sunday is just another day to violate the fourth commandment about honoring the Sabbath by hawking his cheap snake oil to the MAGA masses for cash to pay his legal bills, including the bill about him violating the seventh commandment by committing adultery with a porn star, and the one where he violated the eighth commandment by stealing from the taxpayers of New York by making up the prices of his real estate. Trump kicked off Easter Sunday with an unhinged posting spree on his grifty social media site. He posted more than 70 truths or retruths over the course of just a few hours, most of them during a time when a true Christian believer would likely be in church. True to form, it was a grab bag of grievances and nonsense. He started the day calling Republican congressmen who are resigning to be way out of dodge should he and his insane clown posse return to power, cowards and weaklings. In another post, he attacked Judge Arthur and Goron and New York Attorney General Letitia James over the New York civil fraud case. He finally seemed to remember the holiday by evening time with an all caps Easter message, screaming accusations of election interference, attacking special counsel Jack Smith, Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis and Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. He did manage to get in a happy Easter before going off the rails, but it is fitting that Trump would make the Easter holiday all about him. He has perverted his own persecution complex over, well, everything into a full-blown Messiah narrative where he himself is Jesus. One post linked to a Washington Examiner op-ed titled The Crucifixion of Donald Trump. Another was a link to the right-wing conspiracy site Gateway Pundit that proclaimed him the chosen one, sent and blessed by God. Now, we all know that Donald Trump has probably never so much as cracked a Bible to know anything about the real Jesus, whose Sermon on the Mount advocated tenants like turning the other cheek and loving one's enemies. Because Trump is the kind of Messiah who gets his followers to violate the first commandment about having no other gods before God, and who fantasizes on social media posts about kidnapping and hog tying the real president in the flatbed of a pickup truck decorated with idolatrous MAGA flags. 
Or at least that's the message he endorsed on Good Friday when he shared a video with that image, amplifying the violent imagery and rhetoric he's normalized and passed on to his most ardent MAGA fans. As the New York Times noted, photos of trucks featuring similar images of Mr. Biden tied up have been shared across social media and online vendors sell vehicle stickers with the image, probably to people who call themselves Christians. Joining me now is David Jolly, MSNBC political analyst and former Republican congressman, and Jim Wallace, director of the Georgetown University Center on Faith and Justice and author of The False White Gospel, Rejecting Christian Nationalism, Reclaiming True Faith and Refounding Democracy. The book comes out tomorrow. Congratulations on the book, uh, Jim Wallace. I want to read something that David French, who is a conservative Christian, a very conservative Christian, this is what he wrote in the New York Times over the weekend. And the title of the piece was Trump is No Savior. The MAGA method is clear. First, it whips up its people into a religious frenzy. frenzy. It lies to convince, them, to convince them that the Democrats are an existential threat to the country and the church. It tells worried Christians that the fate of the nation is at stake. Then, just as it builds up the danger from the Democrats, it constructs an idol of Trump, declaring his divine purpose and spreading his prophecies on his coming, of his coming return. Now, let me just play for you some Trump supporters in Iowa who are victims of that idolatry. Here they are saying Trump is the savior. I say, um, when Jesus died, he died for us. So he did it for us. So when Trump is facing all these things, he's doing it for us in our place. When they are indicting him, we are being indicted. When they talk negative about him, they're talking negative about us. I'm being indicted for you. Um, my first thought went to, well, Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus died for me. And so I, it connects in my brain that way. Like, okay, he's doing this for us as a country to make the changes we need to make. And he's the target where we don't have to be. Jim Wallace, we used to call that idolatry. Your thoughts. Hello, Joy. Blasphemy, too. <laughs> well, let's use those words. Idolatry is false worship, not worshiping God. But uh, these Christians have been co-opted by nationalism, by white nationalism. So it is a false worship. The other word that we often uh, don't want to go near is heresy. Heresy is what takes us away from Christ. Uh, and uh, Jesus suffered an identity theft on January 6th when people stormed the Capitol violently and shouted his name. So I wrote this book as an Easter book of resistance and hope at the same time. Every nation has its better angels and its worst demons. So it's going to get worse, as you say, because Donald Trump is the marketer, not just of racial grievance, for sure that, but also he's the marketer of our worst demons. And our racial demons, as we know, go very deep in this country. So we got to get deeper than politics here, deeper than all the, uh, the attacks he made on Easter Sunday, after which he said, Happy Easter, <laughs> after attacking everybody. <laughs> you know, so this is about... Uh, this election is not just a test of democracy, as you point out on all your shows. It's a test of faith, the integrity of faith communities. Where will we stand? How will we stand? How will we speak? And I think we need to find Easter isn't just a day. It's a season, as you and I know. So this is mm -hmm. a season where we have to find, search for the hope, giving us the courage to act. It's going to get worse and worse. So we have yeah. to act with real courage and hope and really show what this really is and, uh, you know, call people back to the teachings of Jesus, whether Christian or not. Jesus' teachings can bring us back. And this book is all about Jesus' teachings. Absolutely. And you're and, and, I, and I love the way that you do theology because it is full of the kindness of Jesus, the red letter Christianity that I grew up with and I think is so important to bring back and hopefully we can bring it back. It's still out here. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. 
you hit search on the bottom right corner, you type in MSNBC, you click on the MSNBC app, you click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.